How do you cut one of the top three overheads in your business? Energy is one of the biggest inputs to everyone's business. And we have made the access to renewable energy extremely easy and very financially beneficial. We always focused on how do we make this financially sensible for businesses. And as a result, we invented the first power purchase agreements in commercial in Australia. We install systems for free to our clients, and then we bill for the energy over time. Out of that, we've built the largest commercial industrial uh, solar company in Australia, and we're now expanding overseas as well. And in fact, my very first project uh, of any size was actually a motel out in Narrabri, and we were able to cut their uh, energy input by 45%. It's an awesome part of the world to operate in, in terms of solar, it's very exciting. And as we see the technologies changing with batteries coming in and different mechanisms to make those things more financially accessible as well, we can have a tremendous effect on everyone's business, whether you have a rooftop or not. And so I think it's just an exciting part of the world to be in. I always say it's been the flavor of the month for the last 15 years but obviously we can get into the weeds with uh, every client and really discover for you what's gonna make the difference. It's always a custom solution and, and that's what we've done really well is make it work for our client. As solar has become more prolific, we are starting to take it for granted seeing panels in the roof. But as a hotel, you have a pretty good opportunity with the visualizing screens that, uh, you know, we look after Bunnings. A surprising thing we did for them was to put a screen displaying what the Bunnings store was doing with solar. Since then, they've actually stopped doing that, which is also a bizarre behavior. But to Chris's point, it comes back to education. What we find is that with our clients, about 30% of energy consumption is modified by behavior alone. And if you educate your staff, if you educate your consumer, they will modify their behavioral patterns because we are creatures of habit. We generally leave the lights on and turn the aircon to 19 and leave the hotel and then come back after it's been cranking all day. But if there's something, a visual reminder, if there's some form of education, if there's a door hanger, I think those things have the most profound impact, not only on the environment, but on cost as well. And whilst we want our clients to use more power in the day, please leave your aircon on so the solar's are powering it. We, we also are hoping that our clients are going to be more sustainable broadly. Education is absolutely the key. And then what we do is ideally a byproduct or just helping that along. The biggest insult in our company is someone who is uncurious. I think people are generally curious, right? But searching for data in a hotel is a problem. So if as venue holders, we were to provide data that curiosity is going to drive an action. And I think what WISE do with their software and your reporting software as well, I think probably isn't being nearly as well used as it could be. I think little prompts regularly will drive that change. And the reward, as you say, financial rewards are momentary and forgotten. Something that touches my soul lasts for a long time. A tree we know grows for 150 years or however long. There can be a, a moment in time. I know that if we were uh, able to plant a tree and, and I haven't done it because I've never stayed anywhere, that gave me the op option, right? But we would. And then my kids would be able to say in many years time, hey, I planted a tree. I had a tree planted in my name because I stayed there. I'm going to issue a, a call to action already is that we really need to be promoting when we go stay somewhere, we need to ask them, hey, do you have that tree planting program? Hey, do you have a report? It's, it's a simple question that can be asked through booking. Hey, I just wanna know a little bit. It costs you one sentence, it costs you 15 seconds of your time. You know what, that question that you asked will generate half an hour discussion internally in that company. Oh, shivers, we haven't done anything like this. What are we gonna do? It's on us, the user, to actually start helping drive the change. Because it is change that I think every user actually wants. Just that we haven't, it's not in front of us, you know what I mean? It's an interesting question. And I'm lucky enough to talk at many events in a whole range of different 
parts of industry. And one of the events I was at recently was the uh, chicken intense farming industry event up in Queensland. And we look after a lot of chicken farmers. It's like totally different to what everyone else is doing here. <laughs> I guess not. It's just big sheds full of uh, accommodation for chickens. And we produce a lot of power and chicken is the lowest carbon uh, footprint of any protein in the world. It's extremely efficient. One of the speakers there was talking about how buying behavior is changing, especially with some 40 year olds and some 30 year olds. And what is becoming apparent, 60% of buyers are looking for the story behind what they're purchasing. So what they were trying to impress through this discussion was that the story is now imperative if you are going to be successful. And when you look at the beer that you buy, you read the label and you're reading about John Boston or you know James Squire or whoever, you read this story, it's all made up. Um, ultimately, you're still going to drink it. But there is something intangible about the story that scratches the itch that we're hoping to scratch that makes us feel better. It's not related to money, but it does drive a buying behavior. The cost benefit ratio, not only of doing the action, but of telling the story, a story is pretty easy to tell. My marketing team loves to tell the story and loves to tell the story on behalf of our clients as well. We don't know necessarily because the, the, the numbers aren't always going to be there to validate whether that story had an impact, but we do know empirical evidence that people are making decisions based on stories. From a historical point of view, that's how humans operate, right? I think somewhere along the lines, we've forgotten about how to tell the story. So about 50% of our clients purchase with cash, as in buy a capital investment, and about 50% buy their solar through a PBA. Cash purchases are quite often sub four year break evens now. The cost of solar has come down so far, you're getting a 25% return on investment. There is no company in Australia who doesn't want to get a 25% return on investment on that piece. Batteries are not so financially sensible yet, However, we are seeing the break-evens come in under six years now, so it's pretty exciting. And sensibly, you can get your business to be around about 80% self-sufficient if you've got the roof space. Then what you do to get that last 20% of your energy from a renewable source, you can buy in from external renewable sources. So we're very quickly seeing, and I didn't think I'd see it in this decade, we are quickly seeing that sustainable energy source, 80% of it at least, is financially sensible for most clients. There's an old business principle that you can only change what you can measure. And you know it's relatively cheap for any business to put in a device on their main switchboard that costs you less than $1,800 to get the first line of reporting, which is how much energy am I using? And the software packages that come with that, with the hardware, you can input your relative carbon footprint for that energy that you're bringing from the grid. Once you understand that data and you can visualize it, then you start making those behavioral changes that we were talking about before. The great thing is technology has shifted a lot. Some of the latest panel technology that we can access can be mounted vertically. If you've got the side of a building that is not being used, we can cover that with solar panels vertically. There are BIPV, which is building integrated photovoltaics. And a big area for us at the moment is solar car shade structures. For the car parks, we can also put in something that you get shade from and charge your car and powers the facility. So there are options. And then beyond that, we have the ability to put in storage and feed that storage from a remote solar farm somewhere else, store that solar power on site and then use it throughout the building. So you can have a what's called a virtual solar plant. You probably won't own that solar plant, but you could be buying that solar energy through to your premises straight away and therefore achieving a proportion or all of your energy from solar. So there's definitely options even if you don't have a roof. I love EVs. I have an awesome EV and we will drive out of our way to use someone's uh, facility or stay in a hotel that has EV charging. Like my wife will go to the Woolworths with the EV charger to save $2 worth of charge. 
she'll charge there and spend $500 in food. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know why uh, it doesn't make financial sense because we can charge for free at home. But it's EV charging, it's just a piece of that puzzle. But for anyone with an EV, I can tell you as an EV user, we are extremely loyal to those people who provision us. And people with EVs, not so much anymore, but definitely used to be only high-end clients. So, you know, you won't buy a cheap EV, even though they're like super cheap now. But yeah, it's driving loyalty and you will absolutely increase your patronage by a couple of percent just for having it sitting there. Definitely sell the energy into the EV charger. You can get a three year break even from selling energy to EV users. We don't mind paying for it. And definitely try and use solar to charge. It's a financial mechanism, but it will drive higher occupancy. Because it's a hotel, you also don't need to have a super high performance charger. You can use a 11 kilowatt, pretty standard, very cheap to install charger because the car is sitting there for a number of hours. So we don't need a DC supercharger like a Tesla which does cost a lot of money and has a fairly poor return on investment and people aren't really coming to use you. They're coming there for a boost and then they're out of there. What you want is to facilitate just adding that little bit of extra incentive to come stay at your premises. And what you really want, ideally, if you're running a restaurant, cafe or a hotel, you want a slow charger because you want them to stay longer. 